All right, coming up next, it's a UFC lightweight division bout. Well, it's always tough when you draw that high-level wrestler who has a lifetime of experience in a one-on-one -on -one competitive situation. Prevailing wisdom is he'll have the wrestling advantage in this one time. As his dad said, the moment he introduced him to the sport, he knew that he was made to be a wrestler. The kid slept in his headgear. He only wants to wrestle, and by doing that, he puts you in danger. He's constantly in your face, constantly trying to dig at your gas tank. He goes from transition to transition, single to double to high crotch. It does not matter the attack, he just knows that he will give you so much to process in terms of the wrestling that eventually he will get you to the ground. You ever sleep in your headgear? I sleep in my headgear. All the time. All the time. All right, big one for him here tonight. Let's get to it. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners in this division, DC, and I know how many chokes you have in your arsenal. Offensive jiu-jitsu, defensive jiu-jitsu doesn't get much better than this guy. It doesn't get as high level in terms of the jiu-jitsu knowledge. He knows in every exchange that he's the guy that's processing things at a different level, from the armbar submissions that he has shown in the octagon to the beautiful guillotine chokes that he does over and over again. And don't think that he won't roll for a knee bar and get a submission. Right. It's just constant danger when you're in the jiu-jitsu with this guy. And even the high-level wrestlers that he's fought have paused to try to take him down because of that patented guillotine. It's so unbelievable. truly a case of pick your poison with this Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. So a more than five-year gap between these two fighters when it comes to the age, and they both possess a similar height and reach. All right, now for the particulars inside the octagon, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Steve Levine. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out United Center in Chicago, Illinois. It's time! Five rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 18 wins, four losses. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, Josh Evans. And now introducing his opponent, fighting at the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 14 wins, no losses. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Elia El Matador Okay, guys, protect yourself at all time, will be my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. They touch him up, and we are underway.
What a ball, oh, and he finally gets the takedown now. So what do they say? It, try, try again. Oh, might be trying to set up a leg submission here. So inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, he's got the hooks in, DC working off of his back. Now look for him to attack the neck of his opponent to try to get the rear choke. Sound strike on the ground. Oh, big combination of ground and pound strikes here, DC. This could be the beginning of the end. I mean, you gotta be very careful when you take these big ground and pound strikes. You need a controlled posture on the bottom. And if you're the top guy, the guy that's looking to finish, continue to gain posture and rain down big strikes in your opponent. All right, so you gotta be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't wanna mess around for too long. Nice kick. That's a good right hand right there. Powerful leg kick land. Oh, collar tie. Oh, he did a great job of rotating him into an underhook. You take more of these leg kicks, you will not be able to be very active on your feet. And he connects with a punch there. We'll see if there's more where that came from. Boxing, boxing, boxing. All right, he closes the distance, gets the super collar tie. Go. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground. Now he has a headlock trying to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look from the transition to an arm triangle. Oh, and there's the head. horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. All right, a lot of high-level highlights from that last round, DC. Take us through the replay. If he fought like this, I would be comfortable entering him into a K-1-level right. kickboxing competition. He's that good at finding and landing those kicks at will. He needs to continue to do this as the fight goes on. Are you ready? Are you ready? Round two here. Just out of range with that right hook. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Beautiful punch. Top, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Beautiful lesson change. Make him think you're going over to right over the top with that beautiful overhand. Great punch. Now he's masterful from here. Oh, he went to a single switch to a high crunch. Oh, takes him no right. Slams him on his back. What a takedown. How's that feel to be on the wrong end of that? Not, I mean, honestly, I've never seen <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> a lot of top pressure being applied here. Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. He's to push the arm to the side. Get his head against And he's out. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from the style of fighting. This man has embraced it, and you are seeing why. He's one of the best that we've seen do it in a long time. Lands the ground and pound strike here. All right, working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. All right, dominant position here. He's got the full mount. A lot of different ways he can go here. Maybe try to find an arm bar or just get the ground and pound. He can't attack submission, but those submissions will present themselves 
once he is landing that brutal ground and pound he is known for. Because then his opponent will start to get a little bit desperate to get out from under him. And the fight is going to be over. I can't believe he's still standing. That shot landed perfect. Oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. Oh, he might be out. He got him. Oh, yes. Now we're going. Oh, heavy leg kick there. The new buckle. Every time these guys come together, man, you just hear what a fight so far. All right, there's the end of the round. So it was a huge strike to the head that stunned his opponent and, and nearly got him out of it. Yeah, that was a big moment. A big strike lands, his opponent's on wobbly legs. That is exactly what, what you want to see as you're walking back to your stool. Your opponent staggering back to his corner and being hopeful that he can get it back together before the start of the next round. Striking class is in session. Beautiful punch there. Great job landing. What a damaging punch. Let's focus. Let's focus now. Slips the shot. Oh, he lands another strike to the body. Really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the mid still attached to his body. The last time I saw an uppercut like that, it was Overeem versus Ndanu, and you know he still has a foul out of Overeem's head. Got to the clinch, controlled the pocket. Yeah, looks a little wobbly on his feet. He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. So holding on to him here, not doing a ton, perhaps just looking to recover. And now he engages in a Muay Thai clinch, and I think a lot of people watching would wonder how you can control an opponent like that. Oh, big knee! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, straight right. Now he's got the Muay Thai club. Looks like his leg is hurt him looking a little bit. Shot a double leg. Oh, massive slam. That'll change the complexion of this one. All right, he's got the full mount now. Is this one of the most dominant positions in MMA? Is that fair to say? Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. tonight as he gets the win by way of knockout and that's about as good a one strike finish as we've seen here in the UFC in recent memory. I'm not even sure the opponent saw it. So a big big win for him here tonight. Well he's going to enjoy watching this one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. Official decision is in. Here is Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Leving has called a stop to this contest at three minutes, 19 seconds of round number three. Playing the winner by knockout, Elia Elfandico Well, we congratulate him on a huge knockout here tonight. He'll probably keep that smile while he's sleeping tonight after what he was able to produce here. He's going to be smiling for a really long time. When you get a knockout like that, not only do you get the win, you also most times walk away with a $50,000 bonus check.